Today I swap words and chat with Pamela Wilkins from Max Creek, Missouri. I'm Rick J, and this is Spotlight on the Arts. Action. Rick J presents Spotlight on the Arts. Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts, coming to you from the Lamy's building in Sedalia, Missouri. I want to ask you to join me in welcoming uh, an artist, a local artist, a few miles away from Max Creek, Missouri, if you're familiar with that. I want to say welcome, Pamela Wilkins. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Well, thank you very much for having me today. Thank you for making the trip. It's a nice little car ride on a sunny day. In a, yes, it is. In a February, with the sunshine finally out. So, um, really, that kind of lifts the spirits. Well, Miss Wilkins, uh, I'd like to first ask you to share with us uh, a little bit about Pamela Wilkins, if you would. Okay. Um, I was raised in Max Creek, and uh, in 1970, I moved away, and I was on the East Coast, and I had a career in uh, construction, and I worked at six different nuclear power plants, and uh, worked in electrical and piping and configuration management. And then uh, in 2000, I moved back to Missouri and worked for uh, J.E. Dunn in Kansas City. Oh, yes. And I was a project manager at the GM Fairfax plant where we supervised the manual labor in doing uh, updates when they needed to update the line. And uh, so in the was it 2001, I went ahead and moved down. I purchased my family farm in Max Creek, Missouri, and I worked for a local surveyor on a survey crew, and then worked on doing AutoCAD drafting and doing survey sign, you know, survey maps. And uh, I was uh, released from employment in 2007 and had health problems, which I ended up being um, disabled. Oh, so I see. that's what brought my retirement to. So, and I lived there on the farm. We raised horses and cattle and uh, really enjoyed being able to have the animals and being able to be there on my family farm and being able to enjoy the creek and just the sound of the creek. You just yes. close your eyes and hear the whole. Uh, the birds in the creek. Right. So now you was raised in Max Creek as a young lady? Uh, yes, I was. On uh, that farm? Uh, yes. I was born in Kansas City and we lived at Lake Tapuingo until I was in the eighth grade. Oh, yes. And we moved down in 1966 and then I went to high school there and graduated in 1970. And what high school did you go to? Well, I went to Max Creek and I went to Harrisonville. Harrisonville. Both. I started radio in Harrisonville, Missouri. Oh, okay. We have a lot in common. Okay. Um, they're in Harrisonville and we're starting radio. And I have a, a nephew at this time who works for J.E. Dunn Construction oh, really? in Kansas City. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. so you graduated from Max Creek High. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And my family, our roots is from Max Creek, Lebanon. Have a lot of people lying at rest in the Max oh, yeah. Creek Cemetery that was moved from the 
uh, the Lake of the Ozarks when they built the dam. A lot of the family was moved from uh, on down more towards Lebanon in that area. So that we do have a lot in common. Uh, and so the family and how was your family? Do you have children? Do you like to say? Oh, that? I was never able to have children. I see. I uh, had a birth defect that I was not able to have. Children. I see. But my niece is like the daughter I never had. Oh, uh -huh. And her grand, her daughters are like my grandchildren. So I'm very happy with them. Yes, I understand. Uh, I, I can relate to that also. <laughs> uh, well, let me ask you this. Uh, How did you become inspired to become an artist? Well, started in the second grade with my teacher and she had us doing sketches and she really encouraged me and that's what got me started Excellent. and of course I loved horses uh, we had horses from the age of nine until I graduated and I used to break horses uh -huh. I'd uh, halter break them and then break them to ride and uh, so my love of horses was why I sketched and why I drew. Uh, see. And when I was a junior in uh, high school there at Max Creek, one of my classmates, he would sit there and he would draw helicopters and planes. And I would sit there and I would draw horses fighting and rearing and bucking. And sure. He said, you need to take shop drafting. Right. And so he talked me into it. And so my senior year, I took drafting. Um. And when I moved to Tennessee, I got married, moved to Tennessee, and they had a vocational school opening up in January of 71. I see. And I was one of the first five students at that vocational school. Uh -huh. And they were really anticipating to see how I would do in my drafting because I scored sky high in right. the ability to put things together in my brain. Oh, I see. And so, as it turned out, they said I was one of the best students. Of Excellent. The so that's is where you first was introduced to the CAD program. Well, Computer actually, lines. it was manual drafting. Back oh, manual then. back then. Uh, AutoCAD. I didn't get involved in the computer drawing until 2001. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I did manual drafting from 1970 until probably 76. So, at what point did you finally pick up the brush? Now. We're going to talk about one of your pieces, right. your favorite pieces, right. later in a second yeah. part. But how do you finally decide to pick up the brush and applying the paint and whatever? We're well, going to talk more of the technical okay. into it, the second part. I started out with watercolor and just inspired from uh, horse, you know, horses, yes. and did a painting for my mother out of watercolor, and then I moved to oil later. This is the oil painting I did. Yes. And uh, so I really love oils. I just really want to focus on doing oils. So that's basically inspired you to become an artist. Now, yes. what continues you to be, uh, continue as a, a visual artist? Well, I just love to express uh, emotions and your feelings on a paper where someone else can enjoy it and you know uh, like I did a painting of a barn and it's got a little trail coming up to it I see. and every time I look at that painting I think what's in that barn you know yes, and yes. that's the kind of feeling I want to evoke from my paintings. Right. Now we're going to uh, as we're speaking some of these paintings will be on the timeline okay. for viewing and I think there is one of the barn which uh -huh. That's what I, I love to paint, what's over the horizon. I do a lot of roads. So going to a road, down the road to and from is a recent painting. So again, it, you want to draw that viewer in and let them make up their own world. Wow. And we, uh, do you have the passion for artwork? I, oh, yes. That I find so many of my guests here on Spotlight on the Arts. They have that passion that just stays with it, born with it. Right. They, well, right. Good. We, yeah. That's a good relationship. I think worldwide, we any artist can relate to that. Mm -hmm. Or we want to be picking up the pen or the pencil or the or the um, the brush, shall we say? Mm -hmm. Well, are you uh, currently uh, showing uh, at any venues where the viewers would be able right. to see these paintings firsthand? 
Right. I have two paintings at City Hall in Sedalia, Missouri. And uh, one is a Bob Ross painting that I did. Uh, a really nice lady from Jeff City, Janice Virgin. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, before the COVID set in, she was having workshops at Hobby Lobby once a month. And so to get my artistic juices flowing, I would go every month, and it would be mainly Bob Ross paintings. But, you know, that helps me with my techniques. So, yes, yeah, so, so Janice Virgin, uh, give you some pointers. And yes, how to, most certainly. Uh, maybe improve on your work, uh, right. one of you. But I, it's great that someone we run into that we can learn from, right. and which makes our, uh, shall we say, our exhibit a little bit more inviting to the viewers. Right. Well, it's great to visit with you. We're about ready to take a break, so make okay. yourself comfortable. Okay. And uh, while well, we look at these special messages. After the break, Pamela will fill us in on her favorite subject matter, her special way of completing a, a piece of art, and any special techniques or the way she arrives at a, a thought or uh, a palette possibility, I guess we call it, um, that she'll be glad to share with you. So there's much more here on Spotlight on the Arts. Stay with us. There's more to come on Spotlight on the Arts. This uh, facility doesn't look anything like it did when I first saw it. My very first job was right here making Levi's for the J.A. Laney Manufacturing Company. The uh, people who I worked for uh, were great. It was hard work and it was brutal, but the, the uh, family was, that owned the building were fair and honest and they were great to work for. I worked here seven years. My father worked here 21 years and my mother 10 years. And it was just a great place. I've never regretted it. I started out in the uh, shipping department and I graduated up into the cutting room and worked there spreading cloth for most of that period of time. Well, absolutely, Ginger Swearingen would have been the individual who I remember most. She was involved uh, strongly with my uh, acting opportunities and she was director and producer and she was fun to work for as well. I've known the, the whole family for quite a number of years. Uh, staff and, and John and Ginger and Woody and, and they were all customers in, in our business and uh, they've just done a beautiful job with this. It's just beautiful and the people that I talk to who have been customers here and, and visitors have all enjoyed it a great deal. Um, everyone talks about the, the quality of the food and, and it's just a very entertaining place and I'm looking forward to it. Creative, connection, control. Support the arts and be the change. 24 hours a day, 200 countries. The show must go on. Introducing the world's first exclusive platform for artists and creators of all kinds. The biggest stage on earth. Stream Spotlight on the Arts 
on fanforme.com. Stream Spotlight on the Arts on GIAJ Global Media OTT Network. Google us or find us on Roku, Amazon Fire.tv, or Apple.tv. Welcome back, everyone, to Spotlight on the Arts. I continue my discussion uh, with special guest Pamela Wilkins of Max Creek, Missouri, a really interesting artist to, to visit with. Well, Pamela, uh, before the break, you shared a lot of information, so let's continue a little bit of, along those lines of thought uh, and expression. Please, if you would, describe your type of art work uh, and how that came about with your skills considered. Okay. Um, my type is basically realistic. I like, love to do horses and dogs and cats, you know, and, uh, pet portraits. And uh, I did a lot of work in airbrush painting and it's acrylic, but uh, I basically would take a sketch and trace it onto a tracing paper and then put adhesive on it and glue it onto the fabric and then go ahead and work inside of the outline and then develop it from there. And uh, I really enjoyed that and I do uh, oil painting and I took some courses with Janice Virgin I spoke before and did a lot of the Bob Ross paintings. And I did one particular one that was a, a lion, and it, I loved it. It really turned out very well. And uh, like I said, I did a lot of airbrush painting, and now I'm going to concentrate on oil painting, mainly horses and a lot of landscapes also of my home in Max Creek, Missouri. My farm house was located right on the creek, and so I have a lot of history there and love for that and so I'm going to and pursue doing a lot of those landscapes that I've had photographs. Yes and your artwork speaks to me very well for, uh, for you so Thank as we're sharing on the timeline I, I know the uh, viewers worldwide now uh, thanks to the uh, platforms that we're streaming on. Well do you begin with a photograph or a sketch first? Yes I begin with a photograph or a sketch and go from there. And, well, uh, is there a technique or a process, a thought process, or a physical process that you could share with the viewers worldwide? Um, how you arrive uh, or become focused uh, at these the subject matter? You just walk up on a tree and say, like this, <laughs> like me? I, <laughs> yeah, well, I just I, uh, study a lot of the animals and also you know, taking photographs of them when they're in their prime and energy. I had a Jordanian Arabian that I photographed a lot, and I'm going to do a lot of paintings of him. Oh, excellent. I, I, I can't forget my white Arabian. I call Ajax for short. Oh. He had a, but uh, he finally became a jumper. Oh, uh, wow. He was drafted, ended up with the United States Army Security Agency, and went uh, my way east. Far East, <laughs> and I had to give up a lot at that point, my horses especially. Well, let's talk about the COVID-19 pandemic. You know, it's really had an effect on a lot of a lot of people, not only health-wise, but it also has definitely slowed down our exhibits. But I have to point out that for since beginning Spotlight on the uh, Arts, I um, I didn't really have time until the pandemic came along. And then I end, was able to complete five different paintings, which I last year was able to uh, put into different exhibits and, and galleries throughout the state of Missouri. So how did the pandemic, did it give you reasons to paint or time to paint? Or well, how did it affect you? In actuality, it kind of stifled my painting. Oh, it I, did? I was, uh, like I say, I was going to a lot of workshops to get my creative juices flowing, the, the pandemic, we had a lot of illness in our family and we had one close relative pass from it and so 
it was kind of a hampering yes. for me. And we still continue losing um, our friends, um, some great artists recently uh, that I've had on the show. Uh, and so that's uh, always touching and puts us through a little period recently. of thought, shall we say. Well, you know, I would like to now just talk about your favorite piece that you've brought with you today. Okay. And what's this uh, fella's name, uh, I guess, well, behind me? <laughs> Star. Star, <laughs> I see. Yeah. Um, I painted it actually in 1976 for a competition, and uh, I just have enjoyed it ever since then. Uh, I have it where when I wake up in the morning, I see him, and I just, it's an inspiration. Now, he reminds me a lot of my Arabian. Yeah. So uh, it definitely got, had the Arabian blood. Right. Tell a lot by the nostrils right. of the Arabian. So uh, good. it's a beautiful job. I can see Thank you. where you would wake up to the fella and be inspired to, to basically uh, mentally get on and ride, as I say, <laughs> into, the next, into the day. Right. Give me time to be broadcast announcers have to do that one so oh, yeah. <laughs> oh so hope you'll laugh with me well Pamela do you do commission work and if that's a yes can you give us uh, the the uh, viewers out there um, the uh, information the right. contact information right yes um, I'm going to be doing portraits of horses dogs cats any kind of animal livestock and I have an email address that you can contact me f through, and it's E L L Y D O G 3 0 at gmail.com. And I will respond and get in contact with you and see what we can get done. Excellent, excellent. I'll be uh, putting the. Uh text on the timeline okay. so they'll be able okay. to pick that up also. Well now, Pamela, we both are members of the Sedalia Missouri Visual Arts Association. It means a lot to me, some great people, uh, great exhibits, and just great artists to be around, to be inspired by. And also, with that same show that we're with, both of us uh, have art at the City Hall, uh, sponsored exhibit by the uh, Sedalia Visual Arts Association. It means a lot to me. Can can you look at the camera and share with the viewers what Sedalia Visual Arts Association means to you? That's where I first met right. you, in fact. Right. Well, to me, it's an opportunity for local artists to get together, encourage each other, and to go ahead and have a presentation of your art, be able to share your paintings and your feelings and thoughts about your artwork and also you are able to enjoy other artists and their mediums which we've had a lot of different mediums uh, sculptures and metal and uh, also one gentleman had different objects that he would make lamps out of and so that's very encouraging to me to be able to meet with like-minded minded people and also they support the State Fair Art Exhibit in Sedalia. And so that's a, a very contributing factor of our group. Yes, uh, yes, now they meet, and everyone is invited, they meet every first Thursday of each right. month at six o'clock at the Central Bank uh, Annex, right. Uh, right there on 50 Highway. So you're invited at six o'clock. There's always usually some good pizza, good fellowship, rubbing elbows with some right. really talented artists. Right. They do have a presenter every meeting that talks about their art, their skills, and, and shares techniques as we do here on Spotlight on the Arts. Well, Miss Wilkins, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I want to thank you once again for contributing to Spotlight on the Arts. And, it's really been an inspiring uh, visit with you and informational experience and educational for that matter. Awesome. So thanks for being here. Okay. I've really enjoyed our chat today. Thank you very much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. And I hope the audience can enjoy and take a little bit of encouragement 
to do your own creative process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, that wraps up another look at an inspiring artist here on Spotlight on the Arts. I thank you viewers worldwide now. I'm so shocked to hear from France and, and Guatemala and, and uh, Alaska and, uh, and, and Puerto Rico recently uh, with the um, different platforms that the artists now and Spotlight on the Arts will be um, uh, sharing Spotlight on the Arts with people worldwide. I want to say a special thanks to the Lamy's Building here in Sedalia, Missouri. Uh, the old jean factory, back in the day, as they say, uh, for providing this uh, venue for uh, such a great uh, time uh, with the artists, uh, Spotlight on the Arts. So, Rick J. saying, see you next time. Thanks for watching.